If you want to know what's the difference between different fasting methods, such as the 16 and 8 method, the warrior diet, and one meal a day, then check out this video. I'm going to compare these different fasting routines and look at their pros and cons. Let the games begin. There are many different ways of doing intermittent fasting, and the most popular ones are the 16 and 8 lean gains method, the warrior diet, and one meal a day or OMAD. With the 16 and 8 lean gains method, you fast for 16 hours and eat within 8 hours. Usually, you skip breakfast and have lunch and dinner. With the warrior diet, you fast for 20 hours and eat within 4 hours. Usually, you eat a large dinner comprised of a few meals. OMAD, you eat only one meal a day within 1 to 2 hours. Usually, you fast for about 22 to 23 hours and eat your calories in a single meal. Most people fast for fat loss, increased autophagy, better gut health, and just general well-being. So, in the rest of this video, I'm going to compare these different fasting methods in the parameters of those results. The first intermittent fasting routine I heard about was the 16 and 8 lean gains method created by Martin Birkin. It's prioritized for muscle growth and resistance training. Here are the pros of the lean gains method. It's a great routine to start off with if you've never done intermittent fasting or are underadapted. It's relatively easy and doesn't require almost any effort. You just skip a single meal and you get used to it quite fast. You give enough time for your body to exit the post-absorptive state of digestion and actually go into a faster state. It's not going to interfere with resistance training or muscle hypertrophy once you become fat adapted. You're not going to lose muscle. There's more than enough time to consume all your calories within 8 hours and activate muscle protein synthesis several times. You can effectively maintain higher levels of brain functioning and focus without having to think about food. Here are the cons of the 16 method. It's probably not enough to trigger significant autophagy and clean enough house. That's probably the biggest flaw of this. You need to fast a lot longer to get autophagy. You may still maintain sugar cravings and hunger during the fasted window. It can be done wrong with frequent snacks and overeating during those 8 hours. Fasting for 16 hours isn't actually fasting for 16 hours because it takes some time for your body to digest the food that you ate last and to actually enter into a fasted state. Usually it's going to take about 4 to 6 hours and when you think you've been fasting for 16 hours then in reality, physiologically, you've been fasting for about 14 or 12 hours. Disappointed! So that's why I think the 16 and 8 method should be somewhat of the minimum daily fast that you should stick to as to give your digestion enough time to rest. You can also fast for 18 hours and I, I think there isn't any significant difference between fasting for 16 hours or fasting for 18 hours. They're both somewhat similar and the difference is only maybe you'll go into deeper ketosis and you burn a bit more fat. The warrior diet is a fasting protocol created by Ori Hofmeckler. You're supposed to fast for most of the day, then work out and have a big dinner. The window is about 20 hours of fasting and 4 hours of eating. Here are the pros of the warrior diet. You can burn fat quite easily and go deeper into ketosis. Fasting becomes very easy and you lose hunger almost completely. It's great for training before starting extended 3 to 5 day fasts. You can have large meals without worrying about calories that much, as long as you still stick within your daily caloric allowance, that is. If you exercise fasted, you can get increased autophagy. Your digestion and gut health may get better because of fasting for longer. Here are the cons of the warrior diet. It's more difficult to progress in resistance training and strength. Some people compensate for fasting that long by consuming too many stimulants and coffee. They may also binge eat after breaking the fast. If you eat the wrong foods, you may lose muscle and get weaker. If you eat too close to bedtime, you'll jeopardize your sleep, which is no bueno. For muscle growth, then the 16 and 8 method or 18 and 6 fasting, that would be probably better than with the warrior diet because you just have a wider gap to consume protein and trigger muscle protein synthesis. But for maintenance, fat loss, or just doing some form of lower repetition resistance training, then I think the warrior diet is perfectly sustainable and it's uh, possible to do it. Madness. One meal a day or OMAD is a pretty simple and effective fasting routine. You fast for about 22 to 23 hours and eat your food within 1 to 2 hours. Here are the pros of OMAD. It's very easy to lose fat because you have such a small time frame to eat. If you fast for 23 to 24 hours, you'll probably start getting into actual autophagy that has a much greater effect on your health than just increased basal autophagy. After proper fat adaptation, you become immune to hunger and cravings. It frees up a lot of mental faculties and willpower by not having to think about eating. You give your digestion really good rest and keep your digestive organs working properly for longer. Your body becomes more efficient at absorbing and retaining the nutrients from food. You can eat more carbs while staying somewhat keto adapted during the fast state. Here are the cons of OMAD. It's quite difficult to build strength and muscle, although it's possible. You may 
may find it difficult to eat all of the calories in such a small time frame if you're not trying to lose weight. You have sub-optimal rates of protein synthesis by being able to spike it within such a small time frame. If you eat too much food in volume, you make it bloated and feel awful. If you eat too close to bedtime, you'll disrupt your sleep quality. Fasting that long all the time may cause metabolic adaptation and cause too much stress. I've been doing both OMAD and the Warrior Diet interchangeably for 3-4 to four years and have seen great results from it. OMAD and the Warrior Diet, they're definitely not optimal for muscle growth or resistance training, but they're still very effective for maintenance as well as fat loss. If I were a regular person who doesn't really care about their health or who doesn't train that much, then I would just stick to the Warrior Diet or OMAD because there isn't real a huge reason to be eating any more frequently. But I think that not everyone has to fast if they don't like it or it doesn't suit their lifestyle. At the minimum, I would still recommend to stick to a daily time restricted eating schedule and try to consume all of the calories within at least 8 to 10 hours. And there is some research showing that it's actually very beneficial for both circadian rhythm and other metabolic benefits. All of these methods, they have their pros and their cons, their strengths and their weaknesses. And there isn't no definite answer that which one is the best one. The person who is doing any given routine is a lot more important than the routine itself. If you want to know how to optimize and deconstruct all of these fasting routines, including resistance training, extended fasts, food combining, and meal timing, then check out my Metabolic Autophagy Masterclass. It comes with 13 plus hours of video material, a four week meal plan, and a workout routine. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell. My name is Seem. Stay strategic, stay empowered.